Well, Dave, welcome. Good to have you with us, and congratulations. And not easy to make the playoffs two years in a row, and especially difficult when obviously you were not playing for the division because the Braves have been so good, so you've had to sort of handle that wild card all year. Let's discuss those two things. Go ahead. Well, thank, thanks, Mad Dog. I appreciate it, first of all, and great to be with you. It's never easy to make it to the postseason, as you know, and it is a different uh, setting here. The Braves were so far ahead of us all along that I think the thoughts of catching them disappeared a long time ago. But for us, uh, still the persistence of trying to make the playoffs. Uh, really, uh, even though we pulled ahead now, there's been a lot of clubs in competition. So we were in a position where we had to keep the, going out there day in and day out to try to. And for us, the real goal was not only to make it, but to try to have the home field advantage for the first round, uh, which fortunately we were able to achieve. And obviously, last year, the Phillies very, very good in their building into the Astros pitching. And you're going to get that series probably against Arizona Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. We'll get to that here in a little bit. I, and you obviously had to overcome a few things early in the year. Obviously, Harper couldn't play necessarily in the field. You lose Hoskins in spring training. Uh, Suarez couldn't pitch. So you had some things you had to deal with early in the season. And, the deal, and of course, Turner got off to a slow start. So putting all that together, you persevered, Dave. Thoughts on the season? Go ahead. Well, no question. Early in the season, we started off slowly or 22 and 29 at one point. So since then, we basically have played at a 100 win pace club. So I think that that's the difference. A lot of times when you look at your ball club, we did struggle early. Rob Thompson and the staff guided us out of it. Some things took place. Harper came back. And, of course, he's now playing like Bryce Harper. Turner has had a slow start playing like one of the best players in the game now. Suarez is back. Our starting pitch and our bullpen are healthy. So we're a situation where um, a lot of times where you start the season and even early in the season is different than where you are at this particular time of the year. And so for us, we go into it. You never know what's going to happen. You Short series, anything can take place. But we're in a position where we're healthy. Uh, our club has changed some. We've been able to move Harper to first base. We've got Schwarber to DH. It helps our, our uh, outfield defense a great deal. Nola's throwing the ball well right now, and our bullpen's been pitching great. So we're a much different club now. We're prepared to go into the postseason, and hopefully it works out well for us. Uh, two things. First, Schwarber, with all these great home runs, I mean, you can live with a 190 batting average when he's doing what he's doing offensively. He scares the heck out of you every time he gets up there. And, of course, Turner, with the ad in the newspaper and, you know, the Philly fans, a little different approach seemed to work. He, he appreciated it. He took out an ad, too, and he's played very well. Give me your thoughts on those two, Dave. Let me hear. Well, no question. I mean, first of all, Schwarber, he, his value to it, it – um is greater than just what he does on the field. He's outstanding as a leader in the clubhouse with our club. But he's in a situation, batting average is low, but he's a home run, guy, hits the ball out of the ballpark, drives in runs, and he also walks a lot. So his on-base percentage does not correlate to somebody hitting 195. So very valuable player for us and a threat every time he comes to the plate. And when he's in that uh, leadoff spot and he comes up there to start off a game, I'm, I'm, nobody really wants to face him. And then when he comes around the bottom of our order, actually he's on base quite a bit, so he's a chance to drive and runs. In Turner's case, uh, sort of a an amazing story when you look. Uh, we all know he's a great player. Really, it's scuffled. Sometimes the adjustment's not easy. But then all of a sudden we get back home. I think the date was August 4th. And uh, the fans rallied and gave him a standing ovation to come back here and I don't know if that just made him at ease, made him feel comfortable. But since then, he's been one of the best players in the game of baseball once again. So uh, helped relieve him. He's thanked the fans. Uh, a lot of times the fans here get that reputation like they're always on you. And they can be tough in that regard, but they also love you. And I think it relaxed him a great deal. And he's playing fantastic baseball. And all of a sudden, that's why it's a lot different club. Schwarber's swinging the bat, playing uh, the DH role now. Turner uh, hitting at the top of the order, hitting second spot. And Harper hitting there. Our offense is a much better club. And uh, that's why I think we're a threat to anybody. Um, Bob's played very well, too. Let's give him some credit. He's done a heck of a job. I know a lot of errors last year, a little streaky. He's had a big year. Thoughts with him, Dave? Let me hear. Well, Bohm's a good player. There's no question about it. He's an unsung guy because when you look at our ball club, we have those guys like the Harper, the Turners, the Schwarbers, the Castellanos, the Wheelers, the Riamultos. Um, there's three guys that I think are very unsung that really broke in last year, and the three of them being Bohm leading the way, Stott, uh, and Marsh. Those three guys have turned into really good players, and Bohm's in a situation he's improved at third base. Tip of the cap to him. He's also gone over and played some first base for us. Our infield coach, Bobby Dickerson, has done uh, 
a lot of great work with him. And he can drive in a run. He's a really a good hitter. Uh, he's a guy that uh, when he comes up to the plate, he makes contact. He can drive the ball over the field. He has power. So he's an important part of our lineup and sort of an unsung guy. Uh, last year in that wild card round, you gained all that momentum with that four run or maybe it was a six run ninth inning in St. Louis in game one when you trailed. So you know how the postseason works. To get there, sometimes you need to gather your mojo once the games begin. You don't necessarily have it uh, when you walk in. You gain it when you are in. So that will be interesting early on Tuesday. Let's assume Arizona, where that mojo swings in a short three-game series. Give me your take on that. Go ahead. Well, if it is Arizona, they have a good club. They're very athletic, a lot of good young players, and, of course, some couple of really quality starting pitchers. They've improved their bullpen. So you're right, and that's why short series always scary in the postseason. You never can tell what took place. I know going into the ninth inning last year in St. Louis in that first game, we're down two to nothing, and they got Helsley on the mound, and you're thinking, wow, this is going to be tough. He gets wild. Uh, we get a fortunate base hit by Segura, and all of a sudden things roll our way. And we start taking off. But that can also go the opposite way, and it can always be one particular play. So you go in there with the best club you possibly can. You're ready to go. But And for us, we want home field advantage because if we play very well here, our crowd is definitely an advantage for us. But that doesn't guarantee anything because St. Louis fans are great too, and we played before a full house. So we have to be aware that that's a first step. We've accomplished that. But you want those key things to go your way. And you have to make them happen at times, but you have to be aware in a short series, anything can take place. Anything can happen. Uh, do you did you like the, do you like the postseason with the six teams and the best wild card team gets to three games? Did you like the schedule this year with obviously you know, playing every team in the sport? And did you like the rules uh, with the games speeding up? Let me get a couple thoughts on that before you go. Go ahead. Well, I do like the postseason aspect of it. Uh, of course, last year I loved it because we were the last playoffs team. But, yes, I do think it's great for the game of baseball. And you can see now the interest. We're going to the final weekend, and there's all type of conversations, not only who's going to win a division, per se, the uh, AL West, but what clubs are going to qualify in the wild cards. So I think it's great for the game of baseball. You see all these uh, markets that are interested in what's taking place, so fantastic. Um, I love the rule changes myself. I think they're great. I think the speed-up part of the game is good. The action part of it is great for the game. Uh, fans like it better. Young people like it better. So I think a tremendous this rule change and even with the stolen base aspect of the game has picked up so a lot of excitement in the game I think it's a great year for us in baseball and um, excited to get into the postseason and continue it and last quickie on Cabrera he says goodbye you had a lot to do with him did you draft him originally Dave or was he win the Marlins organization give me a little rundown on Cabrera for a second and how you found him Go ahead. Well, Cabrera, Cabrera, we signed out of Venezuela. Of course, he didn't have to be drafted at particular time. But, yes, he was signed by our organization, uh, our scouts in Venezuela, and our people there in Latin American operations did a great job. They found him as a youngster. They touted him at that time as being a special player. I don't know that anybody could predict a – Special player is going to be a Hall of Famer, but you could see from the very beginning was special, and and it's been a joy for me. I was with them many many years. I never saw him played in the big leagues with me on the club in Florida. We acquired him in Detroit, and he played a lot of years there. And it was just sheer pleasure to watch his skills and the way he handled himself. And um, I'm looking forward to the day he goes in the Hall of Fame because it's going to be five years down the road. So one of the greatest players of our time, and just a sheer joy for everybody to watch. Now, 100% and helped the Marlins in 03 win a top. Was it, uh, was it 03? It won a championship and they beat the Yankees. Good job, Dave. Congratulations. We'll check in as we move it along. Thanks uh, for a few minutes here today. Thanks, Mad Dog. Good to see you. See you soon.